Welcome everyone to another episode of the AI Podcasts. Today, we have a special guest with us who will help us understand one of the most influential books in Chinese history, the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and talk about the Tao Te Ching, a book that has been a source of inspiration and guidance for many generations. First of all, can you give our listeners a brief overview of what the Tao Te Ching is about who Lao Tzu was? Sure. The Tao Te Ching is a collection of 81 poems or sayings that were written by Lao Tzu, an ancient Chinese philosopher and sage. It's considered to be one of the most important works in Taoist philosophy, and it's widely read and studied in both East and West. The Tao Te Ching is a book of wisdom that focuses on the Tao, which is often translated as the way or the path. It's a concept that is difficult to define, but it refers to the ultimate reality and the underlying order of the universe. The Tao is often described as the underlying principle or force that governs the universe. It's like the natural flow of the universe, and it's something that we can align ourselves with to live more fulfilling and harmonious lives. The book says, the Tao that can be spoken is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. This is a reminder that the Tao is something that is beyond words and beyond our understanding. The Tao is often described as something that is all-pervasive and always present, like the air we breathe or the light of the sun. It's not something that we can see or touch, but it's something that we can feel and experience. It says, there was something undefined and complete, coming into existence before heaven and earth. This is a reminder that the Tao was there before anything else and that it is the source of all life and all creation. The book encourages readers to align themselves with the Tao by embracing simplicity, humility, and non-action, and by letting go of their attachments and desires. One of the central themes of the Tao Te Ching is the idea of balance and harmony. The book teaches that everything in the universe is interconnected and interdependent, and that by living in harmony with the Tao, people can find peace, contentment, and happiness. The Tao Te Ching also touches on themes of leadership, ethics, and spirituality, and it continues to be a source of inspiration and guidance for people all over the world. That's really interesting. One of the aspects of the Tao Te Ching that often catches people's attention is its use of paradoxes. Can you talk a bit about why Lao Tzu used paradoxes in the book and what they are meant to convey? Yes, the Tao Te Ching is full of paradoxes and contradictions, which can be confusing for some readers. But that's exactly the point. The Tao is a concept that is beyond human understanding, and by using paradoxes, Lao Tzu is trying to convey the idea that the Tao cannot be grasped or explained in conventional terms. For example, the Tao Te Ching says, the Tao is both named and nameless. This paradox is meant to convey the idea that the Tao cannot be defined or confined by language, but at the same time, it can be experienced and embodied in our lives. Another example is, the soft and weak overcome the hard and strong. This paradox highlights the idea that sometimes the most powerful things in life are those that are not based on force or control, but on gentleness and flexibility. Lao Tzu teaches that things that seem to be opposites, like light and dark, or male and female, are actually complementary and interdependent. They are two sides of the same coin, and each one is necessary for the existence of the other. For example, it says, being and non-being create each other. Difficult and easy support each other. Long and short define each other. High and low depend on each other. Before and after follow each other. This idea is a rejection of dualistic thinking, which sees things as either one way or the other, and it's a reminder that life is not so simple or straightforward. This concept of paradox has significant implications for our lives. It encourages us to embrace ambiguity and uncertainty, and to view the challenges we face as opportunities for growth and transformation. 
It encourages them to see beyond the surface level of things and to delve deeper into the underlying reality of the universe. By embracing the paradoxical nature of life, we can become more open-minded, compassionate, and resilient. We can let go of our rigid beliefs and judgments, and instead see the world with fresh eyes and a sense of wonder. The Tao Te Ching provides a roadmap for how to live in harmony with the natural world, and how to cultivate inner peace and contentment, regardless of the external circumstances. That is a great point. One of the things that makes the Tao Te Ching so enduring is its relevance to modern life. Can you discuss some of the ways in which the teachings of the book can be applied to contemporary issues and challenges? Despite being written over 2,000 years ago, the Tao Te Ching is still highly relevant and applicable to modern life. In many ways, the world has changed dramatically since the time of Lao Tzu, but the basic human challenges and desires remain the same. For example, one of the central themes of the Tao Te Ching is the idea of letting go of our attachments and desires, and embracing simplicity and humility. In today's world, where materialism and consumerism are rampant, this message is more important than ever. The Tao Te Ching says, The man who is possessing wealth and honor and yet is wanting in his own virtue, is like a wreck in the desert. This line highlights the idea that material wealth and success are meaningless if they are not accompanied by inner peace and contentment. Another way in which the Tao Te Ching can be applied to modern life is in the area of leadership. The book teaches that effective leaders are those who lead by example, rather than by imposing their will on others. It says, the leader who would rule must first learn to serve. This line emphasizes the importance of serving others and putting their needs first, which is a valuable lesson for leaders in any context, whether it's in the workplace, in politics, or in the community. Finally, the Tao Te Ching can also be applied to the issue of sustainability and environmentalism. The book teaches that everything in the universe is interconnected and interdependent, and that by living in harmony with the Tao, we can achieve balance and stability. This message is especially relevant in today's world, where environmental issues and the need for sustainability are at the forefront of public discourse. By embracing the teachings of the Tao Te Ching, we can learn to live in greater harmony with the world around us and to create a more sustainable future for all. That's a very insightful observation. It's truly amazing how a book written so long ago can still have so much relevance to the modern world. Another aspect of the Tao Te Ching that I find fascinating is its approach to the relationship between the individual and the universe. Can you elaborate on this idea and its significance? Well, one of the central themes of the Tao Te Ching is the idea of the individual's place in the universe and the relationship between the individual and the Tao. Lao Tzu teaches that each person is an integral part of the greater universe, and that by aligning ourselves with the Tao, we can achieve a sense of unity and interconnectedness. For example, it says, the Tao is like a well. Used but never used up. It is like the eternal void. Filled with infinite possibilities. This line speaks to the idea that the Tao is infinite and all-encompassing, and that by connecting with it, we can tap into its boundless potential. By aligning ourselves with the Tao, we can become more integrated with the universe and find meaning and purpose in life. In addition to promoting unity and interconnectedness, the Tao Te Ching also teaches the importance of humility and letting go of the ego. It says, the Tao is called the Great Mother. Empty yet inexhaustible, it gives birth to infinite worlds. This line highlights the idea that the Tao is the source of all creation and that by surrendering our ego, we can tap into its power and creativity. In other words, by letting go of our sense of separateness and ego, we can become more connected with the universe and tap into its infinite potential. Finally, it's worth noting that the Tao Te Ching also encourages us to cultivate a sense of compassion and empathy towards others. It says, True words are not persuasive, 
persuasive words are not true. This line emphasizes the idea that genuine compassion and empathy are more powerful than words or arguments, and that by aligning ourselves with the Tao, we can become more compassionate and empathetic towards others. By doing so, we can build stronger relationships, foster greater unity, and create a more harmonious world. That's a beautiful interpretation of the Tao Te Ching. I can definitely see how cultivating compassion and empathy can lead to a more harmonious world. Another aspect of the book that I find particularly intriguing is its focus on simplicity and letting go of material desires. Can you speak more about this idea and its relevance to modern life? The Tao Te Ching teaches that true happiness and fulfillment come not from material possessions or external circumstances, but from within. It encourages us to cultivate a sense of simplicity, let go of material desires, and focus on what truly matters in life. For example, it says, the world is ruled by letting things take their natural course. It cannot be ruled by interfering. This line speaks to the idea that the universe operates in its own way, and that by trying to control or manipulate things, we can cause more harm than good. Instead, the Tao Te Ching teaches us to let go of our attachment to material possessions and external circumstances and to focus on cultivating inner peace and contentment. Finally, it's worth noting that the Tao Te Ching encourages us to live in the present moment and to focus on the here and now. It says, can you step back from your own mind and thus understand all things? This line emphasizes the idea that by letting go of our attachment to the past and future, and by focusing on the present moment, we can gain a deeper understanding of the world and ourselves. By living in the present, we can cultivate a sense of inner peace, contentment, and harmony with the universe. That's a great point. The idea of living in the present moment and letting go of material desires is something that can be challenging in today's fast-paced society. How can someone start to apply these principles in their own life? It is a great question. Applying the principles of the Tao Te Ching can be a gradual process, but there are a few steps that can help. Firstly, it's important to cultivate a sense of mindfulness and to be present in each moment. This means paying attention to your thoughts and feelings, and making an effort to stay present in the moment, rather than getting lost in thoughts about the past or future. Another step is to practice letting go of material desires. This doesn't mean giving away all of your possessions, but rather letting go of the idea that material possessions and external circumstances will bring you happiness and fulfillment. Instead, Focus on cultivating inner peace and contentment, and practice being grateful for what you have. Finally, it's important to cultivate a sense of compassion and empathy, both for others and for yourself. This means making an effort to understand others and to treat them with kindness, and also making an effort to be kind to yourself and to practice self-compassion. The Tao Te Ching says, Be good to the good, and be good to the bad, for this will take the badness out of the bad, and the goodness out of the good. This line speaks to the idea that by treating others with kindness and compassion, we can help bring out the best in them, and that by treating ourselves with kindness and compassion, we can help bring out the best in ourselves. By cultivating compassion and empathy, we can live in a more harmonious world and experience a deeper sense of fulfillment and contentment. I like that. Well. One of the central themes of the Tao Te Ching is the idea of non-action, or Wu Wei. Can you tell us more about what this means and how it relates to living a fulfilled life? Wu Wei is a fundamental aspect of the Tao Te Ching. It's about living in harmony with the world around us, and about recognizing that we are just a small part of something much larger and more profound. By embracing Wu Wei, we can live more fulfilling and meaningful lives, and we can experience a deeper sense of peace and contentment. Wu Wei refers to the idea of letting things happen naturally, without trying to control or manipulate them. This doesn't mean doing nothing, but rather acting in a way that is in harmony with the natural flow of life. 
When we try to control or manipulate things, we create resistance and struggle, but when we let things happen naturally, we experience a sense of ease and flow. This idea of non-action applies not only to our interactions with the world around us, but also to our internal experiences. For example, instead of trying to suppress or ignore negative emotions, we can try to accept and understand them, and let them pass through us in their own time. This can help us to avoid getting caught up in negative patterns of thought and behavior, and instead to live in a more peaceful and harmonious state of mind. The Tao Te Ching says, the more restrictions and laws there are, the poorer the people will be. The sharper the weapons, the more trouble in the land. This line is often interpreted to mean that excessive control and interference can have negative consequences, and that by letting go and allowing things to unfold naturally, we can achieve greater balance and harmony. By embracing Wu Wei, we can cultivate a sense of peace and contentment, and live in greater alignment with the Tao. That is a great explanation of Wu Wei and its connection to the Tao. Another idea that's often discussed in the Tao Te Ching is the concept of simplicity. Can you talk about how this idea is expressed in the book and its significance for modern life? Yes, definitely. Lao Tzu emphasizes the importance of simplicity in the Tao Te Ching, and this is reflected in many of the book's verses. For example, it says, The best people are like water, which benefits all things and does not compete with them. This line speaks to the idea that the most successful and fulfilled individuals are those who are able to adapt and flow with life, rather than trying to control or dominate it. Simplicity is also expressed through the idea of, less is more. Lao Tzu encourages us to let go of our material possessions and desires, and instead to focus on cultivating inner peace and contentment. This can be a difficult concept for many people in modern society, where consumerism and materialism often dominate our thoughts and actions. However, as we've seen in recent years with the growing awareness of environmental and social issues, there's a growing recognition that our pursuit of material wealth and consumer goods is unsustainable, and that a simpler, more mindful way of life is necessary for our well-being and the well-being of the planet. The Tao Te Ching provides a timeless wisdom for how to live a life of simplicity, balance, and contentment, which is just as relevant today as it was thousands of years ago. It's amazing to see how the Tao Te Ching can still be relevant and applicable to our lives today, thousands of years after it was written. Well, we have come to the end of our discussion on Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I want to thank you for joining us today and sharing your insights and thoughts on the book. Before we wrap up, I wanted to ask if there is a particular line or verse from the book that has a special meaning for you? Thank you for having me. Yes, there is one line that I always come back to, it's, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. This line reminds me to slow down and not get too caught up in the rush of things. Instead, I should trust the natural process of life and things will fall into place in their own time. That's a beautiful line, and it definitely brings to light the importance of taking a step back and letting things unfold as they should. It's a great reminder to live in the present moment and not get too caught up in worries about the future or regrets about the past. Exactly, it's all about finding balance and harmony in life, and that's something that the Tao Te Ching constantly emphasizes throughout the book. Once again, I want to thank you for being a part of this conversation, and I hope our listeners have found it as enlightening and thought-provoking as I have. Until next time, let's continue to strive towards personal growth and self-improvement, and remember to always keep the teachings of the Tao Te Ching in mind. Thank you all for listening, and have a great day!